It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hello and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. I'm your host, Uncle Roy, and as you can tell, I'm not dressed for baking or cooking, but I'm on my way to work. So what I wanted to show you today is we're gonna be making quick fix meals that don't take no time at all or very little effort to make. So we're gonna do the crock pot. And this will be done when I come home from work today, this afternoon. Now just make sure you always spray your crock pot and to make sure you get that lip, because that's where it really, all the crummy crumbs really stick. And get the top of your cover too, around the edges, because that's, that's where all the stick, uh, crummy crumbs stick, gets all encrusted and it's hard to clean. This makes cleaning up so much easier. So you get it all in there. And then, we're gonna be doing a pork roast. <coughs> And so I'm gonna take and do some carrots and potatoes. And you can put in basically whatever you want to for a vegetable. You know, but it's gonna make, it's not too much room in there. Um, generally, if you're cooking for a family of four or more, what I like to do is cook my vegetables separately. But what I do like to do is put in a few uh, vegetables in with the meat just to help give it some flavor and seasoning. And that makes a big difference in flavor. And rather than just being in plain water, a quicker, simpler way too is adding a, just adding a, put it in water and adding a packet of Lipton onion soup mix if you really wanna do something in a hurry. And that gives it a nice flavor too. But I wanted to do something a little bit more homey, a little bit more flavorful. So I'm gonna be making my own uh, crock pot filler to flavoring the seasonings. I'm gonna do that myself from scratch. So what I'm doing here now is just peeling a couple of potatoes and the the peelings really do give a lot of flavor too. But I want this for myself, so I'm gonna take and just peel them, because I wanna eat these when I get home. It's just that it's not that large, <coughs> excuse me, of a container for a, you know, a family of four, just the meat. But you can certainly put in the potatoes, like one or two, just for flavor. And I'm going to put those on the bottom, along with some carrots. And this is going to be very simple. I just have a bunch of these little carrots from the bottom of the bag. So usually, 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 when you use carrots for baking and cooking, you grab the big ones first, and the little ones are always end up at the bottom. That's what these are, the little ones. But they still have a great flavor. And because they're little, they're gonna squeeze and fit into the crack pot much nicer and easier. Or you just get yourself a little a bag of those little tiny carrots also, baby carrots. And again, you could leave the peelings right on, which give good flavor. But I wanna eat this when I get home tonight, so I'm gonna prepare my vegetables for eating. And since it's just myself, I'll have you know, a lot of leftover meat, but then I'll have the vegetables all ready to go for myself. And I'm just gonna take and just trim off the end, <coughs> the ends here, just like about a quarter to an eighth of an inch, just to get rid of the, the brown tips. And then I can just throw these right in. One big one, I'll just break that in half. Then, I've got, how much is this? This is a three pound pork roast. I get this at Hacky Mueller's, this is where I buy my meat now in Robbinsdale. Excellent meat. 
very, very good. Mmm. Smells good. And we're gonna put that right in. Fits just perfectly. And then now for all my seasonings. Let's see, I wanna put in, what's that, white, red, black, pink. I got every color of peppercorn there can, you can think of. So I'm gonna throw in about, ooh, about a teaspoon of peppercorns. And you can use whatever flavor color you want to. I got a mixture color here, which will give it a much wider flavor. And then, now I'm not gonna put salt in, because there's salt in everything. And even this little pack here, this is um, some au jus sauce uh, powder. So this, I'm gonna put in, one, I'm gonna put in about two teaspoons of the au jus, just to give it some flavor. And I always like to put in, come on. Not a whole lot, because I don't want to get it too spicy, but a half teaspoon of cumin, along with about a teaspoon of basil leaves. And I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of rosemary. Mm -hmm. Nice out of the leaves. And, surprising enough, about a quarter teaspoon, oop, make it a half, <laughs> of ground cloves. And that's gonna give it an extra kick spice to it. And we'll just fill this up with water. about an inch or two below the surface of the crock pot. And I'm gonna put this on low since I'll be gone going to work. And then when I get home, it'll be ready. So wait till this afternoon and see what happens. <laughs> this is our crock pot pork roast. Now last time we did uh, pulled pork and we barbecued it. So I could save the meat for that, but this here, I wanna make it into just a savory pork roast. So we'll see you later on this afternoon. Hello, it's the afternoon already. <laughs> Just got back from work. So now I have my uh, pot roast. Oh, is that ever looking good? Ooh, it was boiling away and I just turned it off. And now I'm going to take and make the gravy. So what we're gonna do is melt down a stick of butter. Stick of butter. And we're gonna be using, make our gruel. So we need a half, that's a half cup butter. So we need a half cup of flour. And, and I'm gonna grab my beef base just in case. I might not need it. Depends on how rich the juices are. Oh, so, heat up. It's a melting. And let's see, I get a half a cup of butter and a half a cup of flour. Now this, when you make your gravies, it's very easy. It's just, your roux is equal amounts of flour and butter. And you just melt that down. The thing is, is that you want to melt that down 
add your flour and mix up your roux. That's why it's equal amounts because then it's going to be, it turns out like a thick cream of wheat paste. When you, it's, people add too much flour to the butter and you get the little crumbly crumbs, that's what gives you your lumps in your gravies. So you want to make sure it's a smooth paste. So don't put in too much flour. You want to have equal amounts of butter and flour. So, let's see. I want to get this going here. this off the juices ooh, 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 careful ha 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 mm -hmm. so we're pouring off the juices we don't want all those like the whole uh, peppercorns or any whole spices like that or any chunks of food up in the veggies to get in there get my white whisk See how the butter's doing? And that's all melted in just a second. Add our flour. Take it off the heat just a little bit so you mix it. That was very, very hot. I mix this up until it's all completely dissolved, the flour. And you can see it's very liquidy. It's not really thick, thick like, uh, like a lot of people do. Uh, now, approximately, this is all, I, you know, go by grandma sites, you know, handful of this, handful of that, blah, 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 blah. But approximately, it's going to be like two cups of your of your broth. Now it thickens up. It's already thick. Boom! Done. I'm taking this off the heat, and you can see the gravy. How nice and slick that is. I might want to thin this out just a tad. Not, I don't need to put it on uh, heat anymore because this broth is already hot, the stock. So I'm going to thin out my gravy just a little bit. And we'll just take and thin this out just until we get a nice, you know, gravy consistency. We don't need it thick. We don't need it runny thin. And I'm going to take just a ta taste of that. And I can tell I'd, I'm going to need a pitch of base added to that. Now you don't need to add a lot and do it in small intervals so that it dissolves. My base is a paste, so it will, it will dissolve rather quickly rather than the bouillon cubes. And I'm going to put in approximately ooh, about a teaspoon. I don't need a lot because then I'm going to also put in just a titch of chicken base. Now, if you have pork base, yeah, there you go, but I don't. So if you don't have pork base, do like half chicken and half beef, and that'll give you a nice pleasant combination. Plus, remember now, this base is pure salt, so be careful when putting it in. You don't put in too much, otherwise your gravies are going to be very, very salty. So the beef base will give it a little color, make it a little darker, and the chicken keeps it a little lighter. So the combination of the two will still keep it that pork color, that grayish, that light brown color rather than being real dark.
Mm -hmm. There we go. I just need that, just a little touch of that base salt. And don't throw out your rest of your stock. Now we can save that. When this cools down, I'll take and pour it into a Ziploc bag and throw it in the freezer. Then we have stock anytime you want to make a soup or more, more gravy. But right, so you have the stock all ready to go, just throw it in the pan and let it dissolve or heat up and melt. So now we got the gravy all done and we just have to do our roast. <laughs> and there's a little, you know, strings attached. You can just take and cut those off. If you want to, I'm just going to cut off that first one. So that I can get into the meat and, and slice that off. But I'm going to keep the remaining two on just to hold the rolls together so that it can cool more solidified and not fall apart because right now it will fall apart if I cut off all the string. And then I can have the slice off pieces as I need it while it's cold and then heat up individually. So, let me just grab that. Nice. This is so tender, it's just falling apart. If you let it chill, cool down, then it will re solidify. But I'm in a hurry to eat Dinden. So, I've got my pork roast. I get a plate. And I can just scoop this up. And put that on my plate. Very hot, but very, very tender. It's just falling apart. So I'll just pile it up like so. And then I can dish out a few of my carrots. And a couple of pieces of potato. my potatoes mm -hmm. and then we'll just pour this delicious gravy over over the meat and potato There you have it. Let me get a close up of that. And then here's our crock pot pork roast dinner. So it didn't take it very long. I just uh, had it on low, come back from work, and there you go. If you put it on high, it takes approximately five hours. On low, approximately eight hours. So I hope you enjoyed this warm, uh, comfort food and very fulfilling dinner on these cool, cold fall days. Okay, now we're back and we're gonna continue on with another quick and easy dinner to make. You can whip up together in no time at all. 
what we're going to be doing is making pan fried walleye. Now, I'm going to take and fry it in the deep fryer rather than pan fry it, but you get the same results, but this is going to happen much quicker. Much easier is going to get even coating all around with the heat. So, but you can still pan fry it and following the recipe, it's no problem. What I have here first is my walleye fillets. Now I wish these were freshly caught out of Lake Wissota back in Wisconsin, but they're not. <laughs> these are the Canuck fillets that the Canuck uh, caught. And I'm just pouring those right into, the, into a shallow dish here. And we're going to just take and cover these with buttermilk. And we're just going to take and just pour the buttermilk over the top of these. And just enough just to coat them. This is one of those other recipes that nothing exact measurement. A little handful of this, handful of that. So just take your fillets and just cover them with buttermilk. And then we'll just take and turn them over. And just make sure that they're well coated. Turn it again. Just want to make sure that the buttermilk is completely covering the fillets. Then I have it's approximately a pound and a third. So we just need uh, about a teaspoon of salt per pound. So we'll just take and just cover these, sprinkle the kosher salt over the top, approximately a teaspoon. And now we'll just let these sit for half an hour and then we'll be back and we're going to dredge them in this quick and then we'll take and fry them up. So we'll be back in about half an hour. Okay, now it's been half an hour and throw up the sleeves. <laughs> we're going to take and deep fry our walleye. Now we've just been soaking in the buttermilk with a little salt sprinkled on top. And now I transferred Biscuit into a shopping bag. These make great bags that make great fish for shaking up. And now I want to coat these evenly and I'm going to place them inside the bag which I filled with biscuit. And I got, ooh, I don't know, approximately about a cup and a half, two cups of biscuit in there. And we're just going to take and just not shake vigorously. We're going to take and just toss these gently so they're evenly coated. And I use the shopping bag method because you, know, you can't save the flour from this, you know. So we're going to take and uh, dispose of it and it's just right in the bag and you can just throw the whole thing in the garbage and it's ready to go. Boom, 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 there you go. And so I'm just making sure these are well coated. And that fills the basket there so I'm gonna drop those and then just lay this one in gently so that they're not stick to, stuck together when I drop the basket. and just give it a gentle shake just so they don't stick together and this we can just take and toss and with the buttermilk you can't reuse that so you want to toss that too that's why it's just minimal ingredients just to simply coat the buttermilk, just to coat the fish. This is not to cover it. You don't need an excess amount. Gentle shake in here. Just so they don't stick together. And then we can just kind of clean up as we go along. And I made a tartar sauce. which I got approximately about a 
half cup of mayonnaise to a quarter cup of sweet relish. Not the dill relish, but the sweet relish. The sweet gives it a more sweeter taste. It makes it more a tire sauce here taste. You can use dill relish if you want to, but this is going to be more sour. You want a little sweeter relish. And this should only take approximately three to five minutes until light golden brown. And it's just about there. I have my oven on warm. And I have a baking sheet in there with a little piece of brown paper bag on top just to keep it to absorb the excessive oil from the fish. Because then I'm going to take and fry up just a few little french fries to go with this. Just about done. Let it go just for another minute or two. So you can see it's very simple to make. You just get buttermilk and salt on your fish, let it sit for half an hour. Then just gently roll it in your biscuit and fry it. Or you can um, pan fry it too and then turn over on each side. So this would be another very simple, quick and easy uh, dinner for your, you or your family. Ooh, yummy, yummy. And then I'll just take and put the rest of this. Ooh, crunchy crumbs. Mmm. In the oven, let that stay warm. And I'm just going to add a few french fries. And then we'll just fry these up into golden brown. Now this is just for myself, so I don't need to take and do a whole huge basket. That's enough to fall with my fish. So let's cook this out and then we'll be right back. So then here's our lovely pan-fried fish walleye fillets with french fries, tartar sauce, a little parsley, and a li little lemon. You can just take and squeeze it hot. So from the Northwest Cooking Show, I hope you enjoy these little quick and easy pot roast dinner and fillet, uh, pan-fried walleye fillets. So I'd like to say, uh, eat healthy, be safe, and spread the sunshine. Bye-bye.